Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Taki117 playing Kerbal Space Program once again. So, we've started our game. Let's continue it. So, we hit Start Game, and now we're going to resume Saved. And this brings up a list of all of our saved games. So, we select that one, we hit Load, and off it goes. So, last time we launched a rocket and got up to about 15,000 meters we got some science we unlocked some more parts but we still haven't met our goal so this time around we're going to try to get as high as we can so we're going to go to Michigan Shoal see if we've no nope, still don't have any more contracts so that's a bummer but we are going to go to the vehicle assembly building and Hopefully, we can get our rocket to 50,000 meters. So, give this a minute to load. Oh. Now, when you load up the vehicle assembly building, it's blank. It's empty. So, let's say we want to modify the rocket we used last time. We hit open, and there it is. We can click on it, we can load it if we want, but I don't want to do that just yet. I want to start completely new. So, we go to, I'm going to go to my structural panel, Let's put a payload truss. So, to move the camera up and down, you hold control and you move your mouse wheel up and down. To zoom, you hold shift and you go up and down. Up is in, down is out. Let's you get in really close to those tiny little parts there. Um, again, we need our avionics package. And this time, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use... Well, that looks cool. It's a little big, but I'm going to use the Z100 rechargeable batteries. Now, yours are going to look different than mine. Um, that's just because I have another mod installed that makes all my parts look pretty. It's called Vin Stock Part Revamp. I highly advise you get it. It's totally cool. Lots of fun. And just, it changes the look just a little bit. Cleans it up. I don't, it looks good. Again, we're going to have our um, antenna in there. Wow. This time, we're going to have a little more science. Do, do, do. So I'm going to turn off angle snap. And I'm going to place some science in here. Do, do, do. Hey, look, we have science. Science! And I'm going to put one of these down here. Just like that. That's nice. So we have these, and these are cool. I'm hitting R to toggle my symmetry, X to increase it. I'm going to stick those right there. That looks cool. It's nice contained. But these have reaction wheels right down here, and that's going to allow us to be able to control our rocket just a little bit better. So, let's go ahead and pop a parachute on there. I also want to put the, where'd they go? Here we go. The side panels on. Again, I want those to open before my parachute. I need I might not need it but I'm gonna put a heat shield on here anyway just in case because re-entry gets hot I mean you're moving it for earth it's about nine kilometers a second for carbon it's two to three depending on how uh, how fast you're going up that's a little big. I don't want that. I want... That one works well. I like that. And again, I want it to deploy before... 
for all of my other stuff. So let's put some engines on here. I want... That's a little large. Still, still too big. I don't understand. So I need... Actually, you know what? Let's not put an engine on here. Let's do something a little different. I don't like the way that looks. Don't have any fuel tanks. Do what I want. So. Back to using this thing. Pop that on there. Now we're going to use some rockets. That's not nearly big enough. So, I actually want this upper stage to be liquid fueled. Potentially. Ooh. There we go. That's what I want. Put a little engine on there. Gives me about 700 meters a second. That's good. Now, all you new guys out there, don't be discouraged. I have literally thousands of hours in this game. I love this game. It's the best $30 I spent, I think. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm moving through this pretty quickly. Again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll get to them when I can. There we go. That looks a lot better. So, I need... I'm going to make my center section just a little bigger. Let's see. So, let's talk about engines for a second. I have all these engines here, and you see me flipping through them. What I'm looking for is my maximum thrust and my engine ISP. Now what that stands for is specific impulse. This is how efficient my engine is going to burn and it ties into the delta V equation. I won't get into that, you can google it on your own. But just know that the bigger the number, the better. And ASL is at sea level in vacuum. So the higher the vacuum number, the better it's going to be in a vacuum. So I want, hmm, that's a little small, I don't like, necessarily like the look of that, but I can use, no. none of these are to my liking really. So let's see what my thrust is with one of these. Now obviously that's not going to work too well. Mm, 0.51. I need something with more thrust. So this has a thrust of 16 to 18 kilonewtons. So I'm just going to pull that off of there. I need more than 16 to 18 kilonewtons. The only real option that but I like th I like that Delta V that is a lot of Delta V for this upper stage which is good so now I have to get it up there ooh fancy let's see if I can do something else here though this is me just kind of seeing what I have Okay, so it's going to look like that no matter what. But you know what? That's okay. So, this is about 5,000. 
I'm going to call them funds, because to me that's what they are. Oop, almost messed up my staging here. That needs to drop down there. I need... Lots and lots of liquid fuel. Let's see if I can stretch this out. Not a whole lot. Okay. So. This is going to get interesting. So I have a lot of delta V. Not a whole lot of thrust. So this is going to take some design. Ooh, I forgot. Okay. We're good. So I need lots of liquid fuel. Oops. So I'm putting three of these on there just because I like the look. I'm going to drop the Mercury Redstone engine. Now this engine is used to power the Mercury Redstone rocket. The Redstone rocket is an intercontinental ballistic missile that was originally used to launch the Explorer space probe which was one of the first American probes in space. I'm going to call this Sounding Rocket 2 or Sound 2. So I have a lot of Delta V. I am surprised by that actually. But I need to build my own tower. So do I have I do not have any darn. So I don't have any radial decouplers. Things I can stick on the side, but that's not a big deal. Honestly, that works. So I'll stick that on there. I'll stick. I need something big. Put them right there, kind of like that. And I have too many parts. So, the launch pad can only handle so many parts before it, it is overloaded and so much mass. So, I've reached the maximum number of parts the launch pad can hold, but that's okay. My rocket is still going to do what I need it to do. So, let's, it's going to take three days, so let's go ahead and build that. And I'm going to go ahead and save. I like saving my designs, my previous designs, because I like to go back and, you know, revisit, reuse. You don't have to, it's not required. It's just something I like to do. So, we're going to warp to complete. Hmm. Sun's a little high. This might be an evening launch. Depending on when it gets rolled out. 40 minutes to roll out. So, early afternoon launch. This is this is gonna this is good. So, let's go ahead and launch our rocket. Hopefully my staging's right, because if it's not, it's going to explode on the pad, and that's not good. So, 
So, in our last video, we talked about the Earth rotating, and it's rotating from west to east. This is why we have night and day, and time zones and things like that. Ooh, a little wobble there. So, I'm going to turn on Stability Assist. That's the T key. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oops. That wasn't supposed to happen. But the good news is our payload survived. So, we're going to go ahead and... Oops. <laughs> um, jettison those, and let's... I uh, can't really roll the rocket out of the way, can we? Uh, let's see if I can get my camera in here. Yeah, there we go. Haha. <laughs> so I can still get to my science. Go ahead and activate all of those. So I still get science for this mission, so it's not a complete waste. Let me get to the Geiger counter way down there. There we go. This one takes a minute just because it's part of a different mod. And I'm going to activate the Geiger counter on these as well. Because they have a uh, Geiger counter in there. Oh, come on. There we go. And I'm just going to recover the vessel, because that did not end well at all. But, you know what? We learned from it. <laughs> and that's the important part. So we're going to go back to the vehicle assembly building. We're going to fix our rocket, and hopefully we'll, we'll be alright. And I still got 17 science. Or I still got 11 science for a total of 17 from that mission. And I'm just going to recover all of my debris here. You should always clean up your messes. So, let's, uh... So what went wrong there was physics kicked in. It caused my rocket to bounce a little bit. And it went up, off of the ground, and came back down. So, I'm going to fix my staging. So that I can decouple and then launch or ignite my engine and decouple my stand all at the same time and hopefully that doesn't happen again. So as I was saying before, before my rocket had a uh, rapid unplanned disassembly there, in order to stabilize our rocket we hit the T key to activate stability avoidance system. I'm going to go ahead and recondition the launch pad. This is all fairly standard. I have to do this for every launch, and it kind of slows down my progression just a little bit. Now, obviously I can warp through all of it, so it doesn't take up any physical time, but it takes up in-game time. As you can see, I'm already on day 6, with 16 hours and 15 minutes into it. This means if I had any, th any launch windows coming up, anything like that, I might have missed it already. So I need to do a little bit of advanced planning for my rockets. Um, but the stability avoidance or stability assist system, rather, or as some have come to call it, the sickness avoidance system, stabilizes your rocket by maintaining it on a heading that you set. So we'll get into that here in a minute with our launch. We're ready to launch. This one's going to be a morning launch because you know mornings are nice able to see. There will be some night launches eventually just depending on what happens. I'm not... none of this is planned. What happens, happens. And if things go wrong, things go wrong. So here we go. Z puts us all the way up. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our SAS. Wobble back. And launch. And there we go. So, picked up a little bit of, of spin, that's not a big deal, but we're at least going in the right-ish direction. So, for our first launch, rockets turn east, I'm about to perform a gravity turn, which should be done at a, 
about 100 meters a second and no higher than one kilometer. And it's just a little bit off axis pointed east. The reason we go east is because we're turning east and so we pick up, see, about 100 meters a second, give or take, of additional rotational energy from the planet. If you'll notice, if you watch streams, almost all rockets go east. I say almost because there are some that require different orbits. And they'll go north or south or sometimes west, just depending on what the company wants. So I'm going to slowly bring my rocket down to the horizon. You know what this is doing, I have a little bit of time so I can show you guys, is it's forcing my orbit out. So I'm building up horizontal velocity as I'm also building up vertical velocity. Here we go, stage separation. And engine cut out. Ooh, nice explosion. Oh dear. So picked up a little bit of tumble. Not a big deal. I'm high enough in the atmosphere, it doesn't really matter. This engine does not have thrust vector, so I'm only going to fire my engine. And look, I've already reached my goal. So I'm only firing my engine when I reach the prograde marker. Whoops, if I can find the right button. Like I said, not a big deal, I have plenty of delta V. But the main reason for that is because prograde is accelerating. So you can see my speed going up here. My flip has already started to subside ever so slightly. And I've completed my contract. So let's see. That's putting me at about 57 kilometers. I need to get a little bit more to get out of the atmosphere. But what I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead and arm my parachute. Right now I'm fighting aerodynamics because my rocket does not want to point in the right direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop that stage. I don't really need it. And now I have a little bit better control of my rocket. See, this is heavy, it's bulky, it, it's just bad to have if you can't control your rocket. So let's bring it down to prograde. Let's fire up my engine. Woo! Now this engine does have thrust vectoring. And I actually want to go a little bit above the horizon see if I can't bring this back. I don't think I'm going to be able to, so I'm going to zoom my camera in. And to zoom my camera, I'm using the mouse wheel. Um, to rotate it, I'm actually using... Oop, out of fuel. Well, that didn't go as planned. But to rotate it, I'm using the right mouse button. Oh, come on. There we go. Activate that. And to zoom, I'm using the mouse wheel. So now, I've already armed my parachute. So if I lose connection, it will at least deploy when I want it to. So I'm going to jettison that. I don't need it anymore. It's not doing anything for me. And now... I'm going to turn off SAS, and we're just going to kind of write it out and see what happens. This is going to take a while. I apologize. So, what's going on is the atmosphere is getting thicker as I descend, and that is causing me to slow down. And you can see my heat shield's turning red because it's starting to heat up a little bit. And there we go, there's the flames. So what this heat shield is doing is it's heating up. It's coated with a special coating 
that actually boils off. And what that does is it removes a little bit of heat. So as that's boiling, it's cooling. And that protects the rest of my rocket from burning up. Now, as you can see, I've already lost connection over here. So I have no control of this rocket right now. It's going to do what it's going to do. And hopefully not be destroyed in the process. Seven, six, five kilometers. I'm going to slow down for parachute deployment. There we go. So let's talk about the nav ball a little bit. This line right here is 090, that's due east. Um, you also have 180, which is due south. 270 is west, and north is the red line. Like I said, you always want to launch east, so you pick up this that little extra rotation from the planet. Um, angles are marked in 10 degree increments, with the tiny lines being 5. You have your surface speed. If you click that, it toggles to orbit mode which shows your orbital speed and then if you have a target selected there is a third mode called target that shows your speed relative to your target that's useful for docking and things like that and we'll get into all that in more detail later eventually g-force meter over here tells you how many g's you're undergoing right now I'm falling at about 1G, maybe half a G. I'm not entirely sure what these markings are. Um, red is bad. If you're in the red, you're going too fast. Um, this on the left is your throttle. You have um, 33, 66, and 100, I believe. Oh, we're about to splash down. Look at that water. Splash! And, oh, looks like it's going to sink. That, that's not good. I have no control over this, but the great thing is I can still recover the vessel regardless of if it's sunk or not. And there's the C4. Bonk. That was unexpected. It actually destroyed my heat shield and my panels, but that's okay because my experiments are still intact, and that's the important part. So I'm going to go ahead and recover this vessel. And there we go. We've launched our second rocket. We actually completed our contract, which is nice. We got above 50,000 kilometers. And we got probably a lot more science. Oh, wow. We got 28.9 science for a grand total of 62 between the two missions. And if we click down here, we can see, so I'm just going to next through this. We can see our messages. Oh, this stage was destroyed. That one was destroyed. That one was destroyed. That's not unexpected because there was no reason for me to recover them. They're cheap. But hey, I've completed this contract. I've got three science and eight reputation. So people are starting to like me a little bit. I've also done a lot of world firsts, like launched a vessel, reached a um, thousand meters, three thousand meters, ten kilometers, set speed records, more altitude records, land distance records. All of these are completed automatically as you complete them. You don't have to worry about accepting the contracts, they're taken care of for you. And it's just, it's a nice little boost. So I'm gonna go ahead those all those let's go to R&D so I definitely want fuel more fuel tanks so these have fuel more fuel in them um, ooh this looks fun this actually gives me a launch clamp that's useful I need that um, this gives me looks like some bigger batteries those are good this gives me some jet engines I, eh, I could use those Ah, this gives me a radial decoupler. That's what I want. And a fairing. And... Ooh! Dusters and fairings and things. So that those are good to have. Fairings protect your payload from air. So if you have a very flat payload, you put it in a fairing and 
becomes aerodynamic and you're good to go. So I can actually unlock a couple of things from the next tier as well. Ooh, this gives me some bigger engines. Ooh, I like those. I like bigger engines. Bigger engines are fun. This gives me more fuel. This gives me, it looks like, some bigger batteries, some different antennas. Hmm. More parachutes. So, I'm going to go with the fuel tanks. I'm going to research that. And that concludes this episode. So, I'm Tahi117. And remember, it's always rocket science.